cozy. Are you in your tent? What are you doing? Is it your tent? Are you sleep and hide? Yeah, so good boy. This is part one of me putting together the popular kit, which is everlasting, no, eternal bookstore. And I'm going to take all the parts out of the box. So here are all the books. <laughs> there are book pages, book covers, and there's a little bin of electronics with a little screwdriver, a little emery board, and the lights. And then we've got all the wood pieces. And the manual is burly. It's very pictorial in, in its detail. So what I'm going to do is put this together in a series of videos because I have watched people put these together on the internet and I've also, being an online class and an in-person instructor, I know that there are people who find the quick way that things are done nowadays to be difficult to follow. So if you find people going too fast, uh, you might want to hit subscribe. And I will explain things a little bit more slowly and in more detail, and I'm happy to answer questions in detail uh, if you have them. So the first thing I'm going to do, because I am a miniaturist and I have all these different supplies everywhere, and I am, I have ADHD and I'm very messy, uh, I guess I'm going to keep this box so that I have a place to store the unused parts while I'm not using them so that it will keep them clean and keep them where I can get at them. So the very first thing it says to do is to start by testing the LED lights and connecting two AAA batteries. Let's set these wooden pieces aside for a minute. There's my two AAA batteries. I'm looking at the list to make sure so there's one mirror, the LED lights in the battery box, a frosted, <laughs> frosted rod. Um, that must be this emery board. <laughs> I love that they call it a frosted rod. That's very interesting. Then we've got our screwdriver, a hinge, four screws, and one sticker. I'm assuming this is the sticker. Yes, it's actually a series of stickers. And then we've got the hinge, and then one, two, three, four, five screws, which is nice. One extra screw, just in case. And the first thing I'm going to do now that I've gotten those out, I keep a bunch of these little containers that I get in bulk at Michael's, and I'm going to put all those hardware pieces right in there, and then keep it with my kit so that I don't lose them. Okay, let's get this figured out. Here are the lights for our Eternal Bookstore. And I have ideas that these probably are, however, the, you know, they're spaced accordingly based on where in the kit they go. If I want to later, I may add more lights like I did to my room box using LED Christmas miniature Christmas strands. So those work. No, haha, -ha, look, there's a switch. Perfect. All right, good. So that's good. That's working. What's next? The wood block list. So we're going to go through and make sure we have all the parts. K, J, I, and F. And here's E. These are all laser cut and then also printed, some of them. Here's D. They have kind of a pleasant, almost, wood fire smell, but not overwhelmingly so. There's C. All right, 
right, so now we've got all the wood. That's great. All right, so interestingly, I'm always interested in how instructions are written and in what order it's suggested to do things because I actually used to write instructions for a living. <laughs> Technical instructions. So, um, here I am on board A and step one is to put together this lantern with uh, super glue it's saying and it's A12 and A13 and so here in tiny type it says 12 and 13 on board A so those are the things and I'm going to be very very and I mean very careful in removing these items because some of them are quite thin and um, they're probably stuck like I can see there's the tiniest little slice here that was holding that on. So you want to be careful that you don't accidentally break off part of your piece. But if you do, just be careful and you should be able to glue it back together. You might work on a rimmed cookie sheet so that if any pieces skitter away, they're kind of constrained by the rim. And I would just, I keep a couple of cookie trays uh, specifically for art. Now when I pushed that one out, the top part of it here kind of broke. Is it broken? No, it's just chipped. The color is just chipped a little bit. And I have these Rust-Oleum Furniture Repair markers that I could use to fix any of the tones of wood in here that might get damaged. And I could also uh, use paint. So it's saying to put this together like so, and then to glue that in there. I have from Amazon, these glue dispensers and they usually have a little thing that goes over the tip here but this one got broken and so I just ram a bit, bit of um, kneadable eraser on the top of this to keep it from drying out. Now the advantage obviously to using super glue would be faster drying I guess. This is clogged somehow. I'm gonna poke. I keep a pin handy to kind of poke through that and make sure I can get things going. And I think the glue should just go on this piece here. Come on. There we go. So just a drop pushing that through. The color goes on the outside because that's the part that's going to be visible. of that will stick to the wall right so there's that piece I'll lay that aside right there step two is to punch out all of the little pictures and picture frames from a and glue them to J so let's find J here's J so J is one of the exterior walls, and if we flip this over, it says Eternal Bookstore, Sidir Mens Catum Mutato. I'm going to have to look that up. I'm looking, because when I look at this, on the inside I see, oh I see, it's not cuts that I'm looking at, it's little outlines. See the little outlines in white? Here's A7, A three maybe. So that's what we're going to glue these to once we get them punched out. And it doesn't say on them what they are. It only says next to them. So there's some value in doing this one at a time. And the ones that are mentioned are A7, A4, A3, B17, B18, A2, and A8. 
and then it says step one is to glue in our lantern and it shows where to glue it and then to put the other paintings on so a7 is here a7 we'll go there a4 now one thing you could do with this if you wanted to customize it is you could find paintings that have meaning for you and if you have the ability to size them down either in Photoshop or Procreate or some other app and cut them out you could glue them on these frames and have them be things that have meaning for you I can tell you right now that they're just pieces of art from history and they're so small you can't even really see them so you might want to that's one way to customize this so it's and I, and I think that this is probably a time when the super glue is going to matter but before I get started I am going to touch up on the sides of these frames everywhere where the little tab that held that in place uh, has left a white line so let's find the right color and we can test this on a piece of scrap a piece of the scrap wood here because the brown color on the edge of this is from the laser cutting so that's a little bit too orange so let's try the walnut or the mahogany See if those are a little closer. Yeah, the walnut is the correct color. So I will go around and just touch up the areas where there's a white line there. And I may also want to just come around the top edge of that frame a little bit and highlight that with a little bit of this color to make it stand out more if I want to. Little tabs, okay. Super glue. I've got my Loctite gel control super glue here and I'm gonna use this to glue these down. Okay, those are there, and now it's telling me step three is to get A20 and A19 and to build a shelf, essentially. Oh, I didn't do B17 and B18, so where is B17 and B18? That's over here. so slightly stuck in there so what I'm gonna do is get my extra pieces out of the way and slide this out of the way and then get my work piece down here and get my knife so B17 and 18 that's these ones they're just really in there so I'm just gonna gently cut through the little not to crack or break any of the other things that are around it, especially where I'm holding it down with my hand. There we go. There's, this is B18 and this is B17. 18 is slightly wider, bigger, and then what it's telling us to do here is to take 17 and 18 and they're going to go right here. here. Now this is going to be one of those times where having this marker is going to be because we can really see the um, cut mark and we can also see the bottom of the shelf and I don't want the bottom of the shelf to glow pine color and dark or birch color so I'm going to color it in with my marker like that as I look at it from below you could just use a brown marker probably all that these are are markers they don't have a scent they're Those are there. I'm just going to get them where they go. Make sure that it's 
flat. If you cut this off and the little bit is sticking up, you could have, well, that's what your little um, emery board that they give you is for, but I have a bigger one here. I'll just flatten that off. So now that I've got that cleaned up, I'll come right in and just put a little bit of the super glue onto the area where it's supposed to stick and stick that down. Make sure I have it level. Um, you might want to go to the dollar store if you don't have access to Legos in your house and you can make yourself a little corner, um, a little corner level by taking some of the thinnest pieces and just making a corner out of them, right? And then you can come here and line that up with the side of the board that's already stuck on there and I can tell you it's not level. So I'll do a better job with part two here. Make sure that the side that I'm going to stick to the wall is flattened. And then I'm just going to put a little glue on here. You don't need much. And then using my corner piece here, I'm going to get that on there and get it into get it into place and make sure that it's squared up. And I'm going to tell you what, I have some ideas of things I would like to do differently in this room box, in this book nook. And so what I'm going to do is get myself a little, another one of those little plastic cups. And I'm going to those in there and decide later if, I, if that's what I want on those shelves. I can always stick that painting anywhere, right? But I could potentially put some other miniature on this shelf. I'll tell you what, we'll make something to go on there. And we may make this lantern here, which is a single-sided printed lantern, we may, we're, we're going to keep that too and we're going to maybe make that into a custom light that we will use um, using some L little LEDs like this, but you know that you can buy at the at Walmart or wherever. Button down the plank. <laughs> Step four. Button down the plank. Remove the wooden strips within the dotted line. Then use the screws. So this has to do with. Maybe before you even un, uh, undo it. And while I have this hinge, I'm going to measure it because I bought some hinges for another project and they're wrong. So this is three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch ish. I have with these screwdrivers is they're not magnetic and when you're working with ridiculously small pieces like this you really want to be able to pick it up with the magnet and utilize that I think you could paint this or even cover it with fabric or something if you didn't like the pattern that was on the outside of it I don't hate it although there are some Rather, now that I look at it, they kind of look like swastikas right here. Um, so I may actually paint this later. 
because I don't need any swastikas in my life. Thank you very much. Step five. And just in case you're like, why would there swastika? Like, um, the swastika symbol was um, co-opted, co was taken by the Nazis um, from, I think, a Hindu or Indian symbol in it that did not mean anything negative. So just because it is a swastika or it might be, maybe it's not the right shape or order, but don't, it resembles a swastika. Don't feel like, oh my God, the people who make this kit are, you know, Nazis or whatever, because they probably aren't. All right, so we're gonna flip this over now, I guess. And it does appear to be that way. And this is where A1 goes. And then B12 looks like a series of window accoutrements to make this look like a window scene and then there's another picture a six down here and a shelf a, a b14 so first is a1 so here's a1 and again at any time i could change a1 out for thing even though it's multiple parts um, I don't know you want to be very careful that's a hard one to get out because it's multiple parts now the question becomes do we want these picture these uh window parts to possibly open and close. I'm going to say no, and I'm just going to put these down. How I'm going to do this is there's the most uh, real estate in the corners. So I'm going to put the glue drops push things down they can shift a windowsill in the picture it does look as if they have one of the windows open I'm gonna put the windowsill in but I'm gonna I'm gonna um, not move forward with the windows until later um, because again I might want to customize this as an artist you kind of want to make something your own you don't necessarily you're not necessarily satisfied with it just how it is but there's nothing wrong with that you do you it's okay all right oh and then I'm always going to do the underneath because I always want it to look finished from all sides so as long as this is going to be sticking out into the room I'm going to have it be completely covered with ink and then where this sticks, it looks better stuck to the window. So that's what I'm gonna do. me to put a flat cactus on this shelf and uh, on this one so and I'm not gonna do that it'll be really easy I promise so next up is to attach a, the first board which is where now with board K with floor G and there are tabs here to help you to do that 
And the question is, when do you put the glue? I don't know. Let's find floor G. I'm seeing a lot of opportunity for customization on this that I'm getting kind of excited about as we do it. So here's floor G. And floor G has some cuts made to it. And the instruction says, pay attention to the front and back of the G board. And it looks as if it's having the part that says G on it be inside. It's printed on both sides. Okay, it's, it's, it's like this. G is gonna meet up in this, in there with the other letters. And there are things that get stuck into these tabs later. So, let me get the instructions out of the way. Let me stand this up, see if I can't get All right, so let me show you what just happened. Ah! <laughs> As I want to sit that into the tab, that flipped up. And that is something that I find that happens a lot with this plywood on this small dimension. So if that happens, just stop what you're doing. Get a little bit of tacky glue and glue that down. this part glued together yet and then that's gonna go right there that's gonna go in there like that and just gently snap the good kind the kind that sounded like oh yeah that's gonna stick in there now now there are a lot of other things that will go together with this that are gonna help hold it in place so just work it that seems good all right so what we've got so far are some pictures and shelves a window and a floor, two walls. And then the next thing is the staircase, which gets built separately. So I'm going to come back and do that tomorrow. So this is everlasting, no, eternal bookstore, book nook. I'm Tara Finley. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.